Okay, the next video, we've done confidence intervals about the sample proportion and the, or sorry, confidence interval about the population proportion and a confidence interval about the population mean. Now we're going to do confidence intervals about the population standard deviation. So it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to lean heavily on technology again, but you can see here, um, we got this funky Greek letter thing going on here. So we're going to talk about what that is and why it's necessary. So the chi-squared distribution, it's usually pronounced um, or uh, spelled, how do they usually spell it? C-H-I, I think. Uh, so chi-square, not chi-square, chi, not the chi-t, chi-square distribution. Uh, it's based on a ratio of the sample standard deviation over the population standard deviation. So if we looked at all the possible samples from different sample sizes and looked at how they were distributed, um, it would follow this chi-square distribution, which is a formula. It's kind of, you know, it's like the normal distribution. It has its own shape and stuff like that. I think the next page, here's its shape. So kind of normal, but you can see it doesn't, it doesn't have any negative values. Uh, that's because of the squareds. So because it's squared, you can't have any negative chi-squared values. Um, and you'll also notice that it's not symmetric. So we're not going to be able to do the plus or minus thing here. So I'm, uh, we're not going to have a margin of error uh, when we do these confidence intervals because of the lack of symmetry on this distribution. We're basically just going to look at the two tails and say, well, let's put alpha over 2 on one side, alpha over 2 on the other, and then 1 minus alpha uh, in the middle. And so debating how much information here. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to look at these chi-squared that's on the right, the chi-squared that's on the left, and create, oh yeah, the count, forgot about the critical tables here. So same idea as the T. Um, it has the degrees of freedom in the area to the right, but we're going to use stat crunch. So you can get, there's a calculator, see they have chi-squared, but it's not chi, it's chi, chi-squared, chi-squared distribution. Uh, and you can calculate those critical values if they're necessary. But we're just going to create this formula here for the confidence interval. And you can see it doesn't have the plus or minus. What it is, is if you take this here and kind of put it, they kind of solve for sigma, so to speak, with the possible, the lowest possible chi-square and the highest possible chi-square, what you get is this formula right here. Um, there's a little note here. The requirement is different now. Now the sample has to be taken from a normally distributed population. So if your population is not normally distributed, you can't do this confidence interval for sigma squared. Uh, you'll notice that this is a confidence interval for sigma squared. Uh, StatCrunch just gives you the output here. It gives you that sigma squared. The variance is between these two values. And so if you want a confidence interval for the standard deviation, you just take the square root of all of that. So in StatCrunch, same idea. Now we're doing variance, sans, uh, variance stats with one sample, either with data or with the summary. So let's look at an example here. Suppose we sample 30 ECC students and they're given an IQ test. So the IQ test is supposed to have a standard deviation of 15. Let's suppose we have a sample standard deviation of only 12.2. So I wonder, is that just kind of random? Or if we did a confidence interval, would that really be a lot lower than the expected 15? So we're going to find a 90% confidence interval for the population standard deviation. So we're going to go to stat, variance stance, stats, one sample with summary. Sample variance. Now there's a problem here. We were just given the standard deviation. That's 12.2. So the variance is going to be 148.84. we got to square it. Sample size was 30, and we're doing a confidence interval, and we are doing 90%. And so here we have our results. And so the variance, this is the variance, this is the confidence interval for the variance is 101.4 to 243.7, but we want to take the square root so the standard deviation then is between 10.1 and 15.6. So we got a pretty small standard deviation, but a 90% confidence interval does include the 15 that it's supposed to be. So maybe we just randomly happen to get a 
group of 30 that had a smaller standard deviation than what they were supposed to. I think that's it. Yeah. Maybe we'll do the next one together. No, nah, we'll do that one separate. So we'll just have a short, quick video here for, for 9.3.